lie. There is only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The force shall set me free. There is no peace. There is anger. There is no fear. There is power. There is no death. There is immortality. There is no weakness. There is the dark side. I am the heart of the darkness. I know no fear. I instill fear in my enemies. I am the destroyer of worlds. I am the fire of hate. All the universe bows before me. I pledge myself to the darkness. I found true purpose in the death of the light. I know the true power of the dark side. I am Sith. Well, alright then. With a code like that, you can't help but wonder how they lost. The Sith Order hold a very important place in the Star Wars universe and therefore nerd culture in general. With such iconic characters as Darth Vader and Darth Maul, as well as one of the most well-known dialogues of all time, Ark Ephiel Fallen. The Sith in Star Wars lore reach back thousands of years and have had some truly powerful, crude, cunning, and vicious characters taking the title of Sith Lord. Being so intimidating, an entire planet shudder in fear. I'm Walt the Most Gangster Nerd on YouTube, and these are 10 of the most important Sith Lords. Darth Revan Darth Revan is an interesting character, as his history finds him on both sides of the Force, sometimes at the same time. Revan would start off as a Jedi Knight, being a charismatic leader, brilliant strategist, and hero to the Galactic Republic after the Mandalorian Wars. After the defeat of Mandalore the Ultimate, Revan Schist, as he was known, would lead an armada into the Unknown Regions to finish the Mandalorians. Unfortunately, this is where he was turned to the dark side and returned as Darth Revan. Upon his return, he would become the instigator of the Jedi Civil Wars. With his apprentice, Darth Malak, he would defeat the Republic fleet time and time again, forging a new Sith Empire. However, after some time, he would be betrayed by his apprentice and left to be captured by the Jedi Order. Presumed dead, he was only saved by Batilla Shan. He would end up suffering severe mental damage and would not be able to remember who he actually was initially. He would be brought back to health by the Jedi Order, and now back on the light side of the Force would seek out and defeat Malak and his fleet, and bring an end to the Jedi Civil Wars. Not too long after this, Revan would once again travel into the Unknown Regions and would not be heard from again. Not in the living form, anyway. Marco Ragnos A Sith Pureblood, Marco Ragnos is one of the most fierce personalities in all of Star Wars. A being who would rise through the ranks of the Sith, finally dueling the Sith Lord Simus and beheading him to become Dark Lord of the Sith, he would increase his powers and rule for over a hundred years. Being cunning and strong enough to thwart any and all challengers, his rule was never challenged not even one time. Dying right before the Great Hyperspace War, he would become a Force Ghost, appearing to both Naga Sadal and Ludo Kresh, to tell them only the most worthy shall succeed him. Later, Ragnos would be trapped in a tomb in the Valley of the Dark Lords on Korriban, but would later be re released by Exar Kun a thousand years later. Years after this, Dark Jedi, Tavion Axmus would attempt to bring Marco Ragnos back to life through dark side sorcery in an artifact known as the Scepter of Ragnos. Tavion was almost successful, only to be defeated by Jedi Jaden Kor, who would actually defeat the spirit of Ragnos and seal him off in the tomb again. Naga Sadal 
The last Sith pureblood, Nagasadal, would rule the Sith around 5,000 years before the Battle of Yavin. The power in the dark side that Nagasadal controlled was literally mind-blowing. A being whose life was so engulfed in turmoil and strife, the dark side seemed to radiate from him. He would go on to set many facets of the Order, however, during the Great Hyperspace War, he would defeat his rival Ludo Kresh for the title of Dark Lord. But this defeat would come at the cost of the strength of the Sith. He would live in exile, building the Yavin Four Temples. He would in time take on an apprentice, Freedom Nod, who would learn everything the Sith Lord knew, and then set a new precedent, killing the Master. It's a shame how the Sith race ended, really. Exar Kun Extremely powerful in the Force from early on, Exar Kun seemed destined to do great things in the galaxy. Unfortunately, he turned to the dark side of the Force and almost enslaved the galaxy instead. Becoming immensely powerful after turning to the dark side and becoming a fallen Jedi, he would kill his Jedi Master Voto Siusk. He would then take his power to the next level after deceiving Freedom Nod's Force Ghosts. Kun would allow Nod to think he wanted to become his new apprentice. When the timing was right, Exar Kun betrayed and banished Nod's spirits, keeping his knowledge and abilities in the dark side of the Force for himself. Exar Kun was a ruthless and cunning strategist. He successfully recruited many Jedi apprentices to the dark side, having most of them kill their masters. He also sacrificed the entire population of the planet Masasi in order to prolong his own life. But what he may be best remembered for? He invented the double-sided lightsaber. Darth Vader Perhaps the best known and definitely everyone's favorite Sith Lord, Darth Vader, born Anakin Skywalker, is the ever-present, totally intimidating force to be reckoned with from the original trilogy. Being born purely of the Force and possessing the largest midichlorian count ever, Anakin would rise through the ranks to become a Jedi Knight. However, after the manipulations of Darth Sidious, he would turn to the dark side. After his defeat at the hands of Obi-Wan Kenobi, he would lose both legs and arm, burns on over 90% of his body, and need a respirator in order to breathe. And after all of that, he would still go on to purge the Empire of Jedis. Without Darth Vader, Darth Sidious may have never been able to realize his plan. It was Vader who everyone was afraid of and with good reason. Darth Vader, despite all his perceived limitations, is one of, if not the most fierce, lightsaber duelists and is so powerful he can hold a Star Destroyer in place using the Force. His actions would instill fear of the Empire all over the galaxy. However, Darth Vader would meet his end, saving his son Luke from Darth Sidious, being electrocuted by Sidious's Fort Lightning, and throwing him to his death. Nice. Darth Plagueis Darth Plagueis is perhaps the most important character in Star Wars you never heard of. The master of Darth Sidious, he is best remembered as the Sith Lord who could create life by influencing midichlorians. And he could save those he loved from dying. According to Sidious, anyway. Darth Plagueis was trained to be a Sith from childhood by his master, Darth Tenebris, the first Sith Lord to reject the rule of two and attempt to unlock immortality through midichlorian research. Unfortunately for him, Plagueis had no interest in this plan though he did share his thirst for power. Plagueis would kill his master and continue his research, eventually taking Sidious as his apprentice. The two would then use politics to gain more power. Sidious would in time become senator in the Galactic Republic, with him and Plagueis killing their political rivals, all the way up till Sidious was named the new chancellor. It would be the night before Sidious was to deliver his acceptance speech that Darth Plagueis, who had not slept in 20 years, had gotten drunk while with Sidious, and, as he sat passed out, was electrocuted by his apprentice. Darth Vitiate Originally known as Darth Tenebrae, he was given the title of Sith Lord at the age of 13, and would be trained and educated by Mark Aragnos himself. Soon after this, Mark Aragnos would die, and the Sith would immediately break out with infighting. 
Naga Sadal would take the title of Dark Lord, but he would lead the Sith to more problems than victory, and in time he too was killed by his own apprentice. It was at this point that Darth Vitiate would spring into action. First calling all remaining Sith Lords together on Nathema, he would perform the Sith Emperor ritual that would drain Nathema and all the Sith Lords, killing them and making himself immensely powerful. After this, he would no longer be called Vitiate, but instead Emperor. Being incredibly intelligent, he blamed the entire Nathema incident on the Jedi, causing panic. He would travel to Korriban, telling the people of his plan for safety and salvation, leading a mass migration away from the Sith worlds to a mysterious place he alone knew of, Draman Kass. It would take 20 years to reach, however Vicious did. And upon Draman Kass, he announced the new Sith Empire would rebuild itself and journey back to get revenge on this Republic. Darth Bane One of, if not the most important Sith Lords of all time, Darth Bane is the founder of the final embodiment of the Sith Order and the architect of the Rule of Two. Being overwhelmingly powerful in the dark side, he was a standout at the Sith Academy on Korriban. He would constantly search out more information on the power of the dark side, he would one day gain possession of the holocron of Darth Revan. From it, he learned of all the inadequacies and mistakes of the Empire, and of its ruling body, the Brotherhood of Darkness. Learning that the way of the dark side is conflict and strife, he learned that the Sith were only hurting themselves through their use of equality. Also, he learned any Sith Lord who takes more than one apprentice is a fool. And finally, he would learn how to create the Thought Bomb. Darth Bane would utilize this technology at the Battle of Rusan, totally annihilating the entire Brotherhood of Darkness as well as all the Jedis there at the time. After this, the Jedis would mistakenly believe the Sith eliminated, allowing Darth Bane to rebuild the Order in his image and create his Rule of Two in which there were only two Sith at any point, a master and an apprentice, one to embody the power and one to crave it. This would be the motive operandi all the way up until the Sith Order was finally taking out. Darth Sidious Was there a doubt in your mind? Unless you've been under a rock for the past 40 years, you know good and well who he is. Known originally as the Emperor, but also as Darth Sidious, Chancellor Palpatine, or Senator Palpatine, Darth Sidious is without a doubt the most vicious, ruthless, cunning Sith Lord in all of the canon. Born Sheev Palpatine on planet Naboo, he would be born to a wealthy family. However, in time, he would meet Hugo Duran, better known as Darth Plagueis. He would be trained in the dark side, mastering several dark side techniques and several lightsaber duel styles. After this, he would murder his entire family in a rage and cement himself to the dark side. Along with Plagueis, using his newly acquired wealth, he would pull the strings of power, quietly and subtly moving through the ranks to finally become Chancellor. He would manipulate the Trade Federation before ultimately destroying them using Darth Vader. He would manipulate both Darth Maul and Count Dooku before discarding both of them once they no longer served his purpose he would kill his own master, Darth Plagueis. And it would be him, Darth Sidious, who would see the final victory of the Sith over the Jedi and the defeat and conquer of the Republic. Without a doubt, the one Sith besides Darth Vader you better know about. And that's the list. Do you love what I did? Do you hate what you can't do? Tell me about it in the comments. I'm Walt the Most Gangster Nerd on YouTube and I'll see you when I see you.